Welcome, welcome again to the Rick Health Real Estate Show. Let's look at some numbers that you might want to pay attention to if you're trying to figure out the general direction of the Arizona real estate market. Now, the numbers I'm going to show you are from the Cromford Report, but they can be found just about anywhere. You can find it on Realtor.com, Zillow, Redfin. Um, I like the Cromford Report because it's very well organized and it pulls directly off our local multiple listing service. So they happen to put it together in a very easy to find format. And so that's why you see me looking at their numbers quite a bit. Um, it's not numbers that they make up, it's the actual sales numbers. Now, we all know that real estate prices only have one fuel and that is number of available homes versus number of homes that are being purchased, supply and demand. It's not any more complicated than that. What's complicated are all of the factors that change supply and demand. In other words, a fast interest rate hike obviously put a bullet in demand. In fact, we were down about 47% at one point. Then we had this rush of people hurrying to list their homes. This made inventory increase. Well, when you've got inventory going up and you have sales going down, that's your formula for lower prices, and we saw that. Went down about 17%. Now, where we're at today, you can see here that we are at below 12,000 homes, and it is declining. So you want to follow that, because as we just illustrated, prices will not decrease until this number goes this way. And here's when interest rates went up, and this is when listings started to show up. Now, this is kind of unusual. It doesn't mean that every time interest rates go up, that we'll have more listings. This was just kind of a period in time where people said, uh-oh, this is not going to be good. I think prices may crash. Therefore, I'm going to list my house as fast as I can and try to cap capture the equity I already have. And it was kind of an unusual phenomenon. And then when a lot of people couldn't do that and then interest rates came back down, you can see what happened to inventory here. People said, well, I tried. I'm not going to get my price. I think I'll just stay put. In fact, since interest rates have just about doubled, I'm not going to get out from underneath my 3% note. I'm going to stay put. And thus, inventory started going down. And that's where we're at today. Now, the other thing to look at, too, is listings under contract. And again, you can see that when interest rates climbed, right about here, sales declined, got down to 5,090 and 5,127. This is in January, first part of January. And we've been shooting up like a rocket ever since. Still way below what we were seeing back here in the earlier years. Now, one of the things that I don't like to do is really compare and look for something that we could call normal because of 2020, 2021, and 2022. There's nothing normal about that market. So you kind of have to go back a little bit further and look if you're going to try and see, well, what's a high number and what's a low number? And when you look at the Cromford Market Index, this kind of tells the story there. The red line is demand. It's going up. Supply is going down. What does that mean? That means prices will not go down as long as you have them going in the opposite direction. Now here, when you've got inventory going up, and demand going down like it did, that's obvious indicator that prices are going to crash. And look when that started to happen. It started happening here in 2006. Now, there were people that just weren't paying attention to what was going on in 2006. If we were to see this now, I think people would be on board. They go, oh, this is a problem. Prices are going to make a drastic turn. They were all bundled in really terrible loan products, subprime, and then we just hit the bottom of the market. So you can see that supply went up and we had a supply, I'm going to show you in extremes in a moment, that was just way out of control. The other thing to look at too is how many new listings are we getting each month? And this again is not uh, only just proprietary for, I'm trying to find the right one here, listing by months too. That's the one I want right there. You can see it right here. See, we're kind of at the lower end of the scale. So we're not getting as many new listings as we have in years past. And that is an indicator that prices are not going to come down anytime soon. Now, what can happen to get 
us to have new listings. Well, we saw these extremes back here in 2007. October 30th, 2007, we had 58,334 listings. And people weren't saying, oh, there's a crash coming. Oh, there's a crash coming. They didn't. They waited till their notes reset. They had an interest-only payment, and all of a sudden, they went to 7%. And they go, oh, my God, i got to get rid of this house. So they walked away. They had no choice. Why? Because there were 58,000 homes on the market. Today, 11,000. So this is why you really want to pay close attention to inventory and the velocity of how fast it's climbing. Because if you see a spike in inventory that's happening rather quickly, then that's an indication that prices will start coming down quickly as well, especially if demand doesn't follow it. Now, we could have a period here where inventory starts to show up, but it's looking more and more less likely. If interest rates happen to get down to fives again, that could make it easier for people to put their home on the market and swallow that higher interest rate because it'll take some of their equity. They'll finally downsize. So we're waiting. Now, there's a lot of banking turmoil out there. If there's problems in the credit markets, that could really put a damper on demand. But demand is already extremely low. Uh, it's up now just because we have kind of a, a decent spring market going on. But you'll want to keep an eye on demand. If demand is coming down and inventory is coming up and those lines cross, there's your indicator that perhaps it's going to shift from a seller's market to a buyer's market. So there really aren't that many complicated numbers that you have to look at in the real estate world. Where it gets complicated is looking outside of real estate and everything else that's going on in the economy and saying, well, what could happen out there that can disrupt these numbers? And you can go crazy trying to figure that stuff out. What frustrates me sometimes is when people go on here and we're going, we're going to crash, we're going to crash, we're going to crash. They don't tell you why. They don't tell you, well, inventory is going to go up because of this. Well, we have a recession coming. Well, how deep is the recession? You can't count 2008. You just have to throw that out. 2001, we had a recession. It was a mild recession. It didn't seem to hurt housing that much. If we have a major recession and we really pull back in economic activity in this country, then yes, of course, that'll have an impact on housing. So we have to look for that. We have to watch it. And if the recession starts to cramp down and jobs are being lost, that demand number is going to move. So again, all of that activity out there is going to steer you back to those numbers that you're going to follow. So you're going to want to see well, what's happening with demand. Is it starting to go down? Where's the Cromford Market Index, which measures, measures supply and demand? Are those numbers crossing? That, those are the types of things that you want to look for. When you start hearing all the hype about how good it's going to get or how bad it's going to get, you can kind of walk away from that and go take a look at the numbers yourself. And that's what I encourage everybody to do. Because especially out in some of the social media channels, there's just so much noise, but nobody's really bringing you any facts. And you can get the facts on your own from those sources that I just named. So I hope that helps. If you have any questions, shoot me an email at rick at rickhelps.com. Take care.